Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome you all for the, the special CME activity uh, taking place today. Actually, I uh, would like to congratulate the Nutrition Unit for uh, starting a new unit today. And uh, like to uh, have, and we are actually proud to have uh, one of the great resource persons here to talk to you on human nutrition. So, we are as Colombo North Clinical Society in collaboration with Sri Lanka Medical Nutrition Association. Um, we uh, will have this uh, special CME lecture on uh, nutrition and immunity with special emphasis on vitamin D. As you know, it's one of the vitamins which is being prescribed very frequently these days. And uh, we are having Dr. Renuka Jayati, sir. Uh, I think he doesn't need any introduction to this audience, everybody uh, knows her. She is working currently as head at the Department of Nutrition and at Medical Research Institute and she is a visiting consultant medical nutritionist at National Hospital of Sri Lanka. Over to you, madam. Good afternoon. I think there are a lot of nutrition people rather than non-nutrition doctors. But uh, anyhow, I think um, my topic is on this nutrition and immunity. Uh, especially, I thought I will just uh, emphasize on vitamin D at the end of my presentation. Um, I thought that I will just start with this type of uh, slide. This is, um, you can see that what are the kind of uh, 21st century nutrition, the disease problems in the country, I mean not in Sri Lanka, all over the world. So how does this uh, involvement of the immune system as well as how this influence of the nutrition. So when you really look at it like kind of um, overview of it, um, you can see all these diseases and the kind of uh, starting from obesity and ending with malnutrition because these are the two spectrums. So in between you have so many other uh, newly coming up diseases like see, the cardiovascular, chronic inflammatory allergies and the all sort of things. So how does the immune system involve and how does the nutrition involve? You can see that mainly except kind of malaria as well as um, for uh, uh, things. Uh, otherwise, most of the diseases are having the influence of nutrition. At the same time, almost all the diseases have an involvement of the immune system. So this is something we had to really think of because uh, we, we are going to cater the 21st century, uh, what type of um, issues we are going to face in the future. So you can see that immunity is important for most of the diseases as well as the nutrition, also the same way it's uh, needed. So this is something just to remind you what is this immune system, just to your kind of going back to the your biochemistry and physiology. Um, uh, the, uh, anyhow, in the new, uh, immune system, we are thinking about the T cells and B cells and macrophages. These are the main kind of things uh, we are looking at, uh, especially uh, kind of destroying the pathogens as well as the kind of damaging tissues and things. So how, how we are going to uh, improve the, this aspect only that in the immune system we have to think of. Then at the same time, uh, it's not the kind of, I mean, it's a fact that this life is a matter of balance. So this is a balance between death and health and the disease are in between. So uh, these two balance, this balance will uh, happen with the kind of depending on your immune cells as well as how, what are the kind of pathogens that you are coming across. So then the, this is, we are doing all these things to keep on this balance then if the balance goes out, then uh, the, it will go into the, any aspect, whether uh, we will be healthy or we will be having the health. So the, usually the, these are the things which are important. So all of us know these the pro-inflammatory cytokines and the, in the immune system, these are called as the hormones. And the, uh, especially interleukin 1, 6 and the this uh, factor DNF alpha, these are the kind of things that we have to really think about whenever we are looking at the inflammatory responses. And that usually that when we really, I mean this is a kind of normal way that our immune system, our have the, this um, body reacts with the immune system. But at the same time now we had to really think about the non-infectious 
lifestyle and the non-communicable features also. This is what we have to really think about in the 21st century. And the, they are that how this inflammatory stressors, how that body respond to that. So this is very important. How that in addition to the infections, how these non-infectious lifestyle things will affect to the body. So there are that, um, so many things are there under that like intense exercise, aging, obesity, all these things are important because now currently people are, some people are very worried about exercise, some they don't do exercises at all, some they do intense exercises. So all these things uh, we had to think about, these are kind of inflammatory stressors people are getting. So then how this immune system uh, change. So this is uh, just uh, kind of for the to you to see the kick of it and the normal host response uh, the uh, happen and the, you can see that I mean I am not going to talk about the whole thing I just want to really emphasize on this uh, antioxidants and the immune nutrition component that is on your kind of uh, on, on my right side I don't know on your side but then um, they are that we are thinking about the improving the immunity with the, some kind of immune nutrition so, which is the thing that immune nutrition uh, component has come up with, even with the, um, in the nutrition arena. Uh, they are that mainly what we are doing is we are providing antioxidant to strengthen the, uh, our defense system. So, this is what which is important. So, there are so many antioxidants are involved with that like sulfur amino acid, glutamine and the, all these things and the improving the TNT cells. So all the all the, that component whole cycle is the one that which is very important in the nutritional uh, component. But at the same time when you have free radicals that is oxidants that is on my left side you can see there that what happen is when you have the more oxidant then the tissue damages are high, pathogens killing are higher. So this is also kind of balance. So you need the balance between oxidant and the antioxidant so this is the kind of things we have to see what are the things are important to keep up this balance because this is happening every day in our body in the cellular aspect um, there that the, these uh, oxidant are uh, free radicals are uh, forming at the same time if you don't get your antioxidant then the, this, this balance won't work so the, this is the finally that it will really come up with the um, um, disease problem this is especially for the uh, implementary status. So at that thing that you know that we that our, throughout our life we have this implementary stress levels. So then with the uh, in that we can uh, really look at what are the kind of advantages and the disadvantages of having the good immune system to control this implementary stress level throughout our life because these are coming up in the um, uh, long run because no one can really uh, do anything for that because this is this is the reason this 21st century uh, nutritional challenges are um, kind of uh, very critical because uh, the things uh, whatever the stress levels are higher than earlier so then the, it is happening throughout the life so how are we going to really uh, look at how can we have a good kind of immune system to um, maintain the balance so the, when we really look at in addition to that, what are the kind of factors which really influence this inflammation in the body? The one of the things that as I mentioned you, the antioxidant intake. So which is very important. How we, what type of antioxidant are needed? How are we going to take it? How do we maintain our antioxidant level in the body? Because all this time we did not want to much think about it because our life went on very happily and the not much stress level. But the things are changing and then we have to really think about how we are going to improve our antioxidant intake. Then the second one is the type of fat in the diet which is very important. And the other factor is we know that currently 25% of the Sri Lankans are obese. So that is obesity is a big issue. In addition to that there are non-indirect nutrition and influence factors are there. Those are gender, aging and genetics. So this thing will also come along with the, this nutritional kind of influences. So then the, we had to really think about all these six, you can't see with me, yeah, um, uh, this uh, nutritional influences, um, how we can, because nutritional things we can reverse it or we can really minimize it. But some of the things like gender, aging, genetics, we might not reverse it, but we can support it. So the, this is important that whatever things we, what we can reverse it.
So the, this is these are the kind of nutrients then the which modulate the immune functions. That is that as I mentioned you earlier, they are the alteration in the antioxidant defense that you call the balance is the one we call cell redox state. Cell redox state means the oxidate and the antioxidant balance you call the cell redox state. So there, mm -hmm. what are the nutrients that which will help to maintain the cell redox state? So you can see that there are four kind of things and the uh, there are may, these uh, minerals are there like copper, zinc, iron and selenium. Then when it comes to the vitamins, vitamin C, D, B6 and folic acid, these are very important. Then the lipids are also important because some lipids are good, some lipids are not good. At the same time, amino acids and protein. So all four aspects actually we have to think about when if we want to really alter our kind of cell redox state. So this is very important. Then the, when we come to the fat, so why we are worried about fat? Because we have to maintain the fatty acid ratio that is W6 and W3 that you call as a W3, you call as omega-3 fatty acid. W6 is the major kind of polyunsaturated fatty acid. So this is a fatty acid chain. In the chain that there is a W component, there is a 6 and the 3 and the double bonds are there. So that's what this W6, W3 and all these biochemical things have come up. But this is very important in the to maintain in the ratio. So when we really look at what has happened in the past in the Paleolithic ancestors, that is mean 2 million years ago, how they have managed these things. So that time actually when they when we look at their diet, uh, their diet is something like they were eating roots and then the, the kind of honey and the meat. So these are the other hunter-gatherers they have been consuming and the little bit of the vegetables and things those are very seasonal not much things so when we really look at their diets that uh, analyze they are they have equal mix of w6 and w3 fatty acids so the but currently what has happened is with the western civilization a lot of new fats have introduced then the ratio has really changed so ratio has now really changed with the 17 to 1 so which is very harmful for the inflammatory status so this is something very important to really look at what has happened to us at present and the how were we uh, previously and the how can we really make the this shift because Sri Lanka is uh, still we have a lot of traditional food and the, we have the natural resources we can still then reverse back but the countries like America and the US, UK and them they, they, they are very difficult to reverse because they have gone long way for them the now they turn back and see what has happened to us but they want to uh, change now that's the reason now those days we have a gum cupola so they are the cupola they go and pick and eat and everything but now in u.s market the highest uh, um, price uh, egg is uh, this um, that type of uh, they they now artificially create that type of environment for the hens and they have to lay the eggs and the, that's what now they are trying to get the natural environment in Sri Lanka city, we still have the natural environment. We can always reverse the uh, some of the things that we have really uh, doing as a bad, uh, bad practices. So then what are the, these food items is polyunsaturated and the, how are we going to maintain this N6 and the N3? So you know omega-6 uh, 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 things are mainly what we are eating in Sri Lanka is soya, soya oil. And then the corns, and as well as corn, no corn oil, and the sunflower oil. So these are the foods that which contain, these are the oil which contain more omega-6 fatty acid. But currently, I mean, those US and the other countries, they are facing a huge issue. But still, Sri Lanka, we are, we are still using the, majority are using the coconut oil. So therefore, we don't much have in the omega-6. But now it is coming to the market. And coming to the practice, now the people are really turning and going for the omega-6 rich oils. But at the same time, omega-3 rich oil. So this is plenty in fish because fish is not a big issue for Sri Lanka. We have enough fish in Sri Lanka and different type of fish. Um, so what are the effects of this N6 and the N3 and why we are worried about it? And N6, you know, uh, which is which has positive and the negative things also. Now positive one is it lowers the cholesterol. But not triglyceride. But at the same time, it has a pro-inflammatory nature. So this is what we are worried about. It's not about cholesterol, low triglyceride, no anything. But omega-3, when we take, 
uh, it actually uh, lowers the triglycerides, but it does not uh, do anything for the cholesterol. But it is an anti-inflammatory item. So this is what we are worried because now in the, this time part of uh, century, uh, inflammatory uh, stresses are higher. So whether are we going to take pro-inflammatory diet or whether we are getting trying to get the anti-inflammatory diet or whether we are thinking about our cholesterol and triglycerides and the, whether we are thinking about that. So this is what we have to make the balance out of it. So this is the reason that um, you can't say any food is bad. Each and every food has their positives and the negatives. But these positives and the negatives you have to utilize according to the status of the country, disease status and the ability. Um, especially now fish oil. So this is, I thought that I should really uh, concentrate a bit of it. And the, everybody's um, for for the uh, kind of uh, prescribing and the do the fish oil and a lot of fish oil in the market. It has a kind of an anti-inflammatory property, anti-aggregatory property, lipid-organic pro property. At the same time, it influences the central nervous system. So, it has positive things. So, in Sri Lanka, that we have enough uh, uh, things. But uh, recently, we analyzed the uh, whole era of the fish in Sri Lanka. So, the, for us, it, we found um, fish is having the N3, N6 both. But the N3 is a little higher, N3 higher than the N6. Um, the especially salia. Salia is having very high entry level um, than hurula because we were earlier thinking about hurula is coming from the natural group and it has more um, oil. Uh, but uh, when we analyze, we realize salia has more um, oil than the uh, hurula. And the, especially that salia you eat with the skin because this oil is mainly deposited in the under the skin and the head. So when you are eating salia, a lot of time people don't remove the skin. People eat with the skin. So then the, it is tendency to get more um, uh, entry from the salia is much higher. At the same time, um, there are all the other things like linna and this tuna and all these fish are having a certain amount of entry fatty acid. So which is which shows if we can add the fish into our diet, depending on the choices, it will give a certain amount of entry into our diet. Then the next uh, problem we are facing is obesity. Now you know adipose tissue, which really becomes an inflammatory site. Now you can see this in picture, it's not that clear. So the adipocytes, how these macrophages and the, and the this uh, leptin and everything, how happened, and then with the obesity is gaining, more gaining and things, how this macrophage recruitment and all these things happen and the, how this it become the inflammatory. So this is what which is important because obesity itself is the highly inflammatory status. Then the other one is aging. So I uh, have mentioned you the aging is one of the factors we have to think about. It will actually enhance the inflammation and the oxidative stress also. So here it is very important because in the aging month the other, with the aging, you get the stress, that is the aging is the stress itself and then the inflammatory and oxidative and the will be increased with the, with the aging. Then what happens is uh, they are actually, because of that, the cytokine production will increase and especially loss of the muscle and bone and the, it will automatically come with the lipid levels also. Then the, um, uh, the, this is uh, something then the inflammatory component related disease will be getting more with the aging. So these are the things we have to think about. How are we going to really re reverse this oxidative stress? Because some of the now we know age, you can't reverse aging, but you can you can balance aging. So this is important, and the, you can reverse oxidative stresses. So these are the important. Then the you don't get the you don't go into the accelerated aging process. This is what we can really minimize because otherwise people will go into the accelerated aging model. This is the one we can really prevent it with the, um, uh, handling this inflammatory and the oxidative status. Then this is gene I thought I just kind of just to touch on. You know genetically we can't much do much things because with the we coming, coming from the father and the mother but then it come to the child and it may be normal children or increase or greatly increase. So we have to always think about genetical factors also because it will be part of our food. We can't do much things and the 
but still that is we have to keep it in mind and another important thing uh, for us is uh, i think current um, era but my but health so now almost all the, the evidences now it is it has shown gut health is very much important because uh, this they consider as the gut is a second brain because most of the diseases are depending on the gut so this is a kind of new kind of evidences so if you are if someone is maintaining the proper gut health they can really get away from a lot of diseases the especially um, this gut microbiota they really regulate our immune system and the uh, when the especially the gut disperses and the what happens is they are more prone to get infectious diseases and the, when we really look at our uh, traditional diet we have a lot of fermented food and the everything and achar and all sort of things and the now those and the uh, poppers and things people ate it as a fermented but, but now everything is instant so you don't get that fermented uh, culture into that so there are that you can't really now maintain your gut uh, as the way we did in the past so now we had to really think about it um at the same time this gut microbiota is really changed due to frequent use of antibiotics and antacids and so many things are now people are using so all these things really affect the gut microbiota at the um, uh, then it is uh, very important to this keep this healthy microbiota in your gut at the same time this probiotics especially the lactobacilli and the bifidobacteria and the most now the those things we ate curd because curd uh, uh, the way they prepare it has lactobacillus but now a lot of people eat um, uh, yogurt but yogurt does not contain it because it grows in the different man and the they put your gelatin and the sugar and everything so now the process has changed and the, the yogurt uh, then you had to prepare it in the proper manner to get the proper lactobacillus sometimes most of the yogurt and the and the yogurt uh, Uh, usually they keep in the fridges for sometimes expiry date to the three months, six months, and the things. So then you don't get that lactobacillus in those uh, things. Then the that's what we had to really think about. How are we going to improve this gut health? Because we had all these practices in our traditions, and uh, we can really take it back again. And uh, this will really help to help to protect from the uh, infections, and especially with the respiratory tract infection. This is very important. even in this covid period that the is looking at the gut health is something very important and the other one is um, the as i mentioned you this plant food fight at the fermented food this is achar when all these things are not new things in sri lanka because we had all these things and the going back to the curd and things then um, i thought i will uh, touch upon the vitamin d as a last one and uh, all of us know vitamin d now is a kind of feature we are all not talking about and the which really vitamin d modulate the immune functions and especially for the t cells and the which will uh, facilitate i mean these are real science and the facts evidences which really uh, facilitate the viral clearance at the same time it will decrease the inflammatory responses that will produce the symptoms then the um, especially in the covid 19 we know the main problem comes is the cytokine storm so then the cytokine storm uh, that way the vitamin d is it say when they have a higher vitamin d levels which will give the low level of the interleukin 6 so which will really uh, help in uh, not getting into the cytokine storm so this is what the feature of the vitamin d so at the same time vitamin d uh, treatment which will um, it has shown that it will reduce the transmission of infections and the decrease in the viral replications and accelerate in viral clearance and the and by that reducing the inflammation and the other thing is uh, vitamin d uh, increase the asymptomatic carriage and the and the reduce the cough and other symptomatic things so these are the kind of evidences with the vitamin d so by looking at the vitamin d evidences we know we have sunlight from the small age we were taught Uh, go to the sun you will get your vitamin d so we think that we have enough vitamin d and uh, we never bother about uh, vitamin d but this is a um, national study we did in 2017 with the uh, adolescent school adolescent because why we selected school adolescent because they are the people who are mainly moody and they are working outside they are always and after school they have to go walk little bit and uh, at least 
15 uh, 20 minutes they are, they will be exposed to the sun somehow so you can see that in the, our provinces um, overall sri lanka we got as 13% vitamin D deficient and the all to be the 15 50% of our school adolescents were vitamin D insufficient or deficient so which is not really acceptable for the thing but you can see at the same time some districts like some provinces like sapragumu and center they tend to cover themselves most of the time because they have a lot of clouds they are having the cold climate so that the provinces they have a much higher level of this problem and the, when we look at the female and male female has a higher problem than the male because male tend to boys tend to go out and the girls and the girls have the a higher problem so the um, when we really uh, see what is happening why that which is happening because we are a tropical country we have sun 20, 360 days and then what is going on so when we look at the uv index you know uv index there are two types that is uv a and uv b uv a is mainly in the morning and the uv uv b is mainly in the from 10 o'clock to uh, 3 o'clock um, when you really look get the through all these months uh, in the areas how this UV light change you can see in the months like November December because these months that it is rainy and cloudy the UV index is lower so how do you measure the UV indexes from UV 1 to UV 11 usually in Sri Lanka Colombo UV index is 30 uh, because we are having the very high UV index around 12 o'clock our UV index is 30 but still that it varies and this is what which is happening and from January, November, December it is very low, um, the lower than the normal and the, it is not kind of constant. So the, 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 this is now we were always thinking our UV is very high and because of that we don't need much problem. We will get our uh, vitamin D from the UV. But the things are now changing and it's not only Sri Lanka, I think most of the countries um, close to the equator, they have this issue. Then the problem comes is the skin types. And the, this is something now when we really look at, there are six kind of skin types. And the Sri Lankan and Sri Lankans, we have skin type of four and five. So when we look at four and five, we have a kind of advantages because we rarely burn and the, we often dance and the um, uh, but uh, the type uh, 5 one, they are also not much burning. So that means we can stay a little bit longer in the uh, sun than other people without, without getting problem with that uh, skin cam melanomas. But all these things have changed with the climate change. With the climate change now, uh, because sun exposure has become the things and the rays have become more oh, intense. So these, all these things have a little bit changed with the climate change. But at the same time, the, we know uh, the this will really affect the, when you are staying in the sun for a long period of time. It will harmful the even immune system. So these are the other problems we are having. That may be the reason some farmers who are exposed to the sun for a long period of time, they, they say that they have at risk of eye damages as well as immune system also get compromised. Then the percentage of sun exposure is also important. So the percentage, you know that different. Usually now like us, we get something like 30% or sometimes now gents, most of the time they get only 10% because they have long pants, sleeve shirts, long sleeve shirts and they get 10% of exposure. But the, um, most probably uh, someone who is having the short sleeve shirt, they get the 30%. And the people the, like the kids, then the, they get the, about 50%. So the, their exposure levels are also, percentages are different. So with the percent, the percentage of exposure, we know how, how many uh, minutes, how many hours we have to stay in the sun to get the adequate quantity of vitamin D. Then the, uh, the period of exposure is changed. So when you really look at the, uh, looking at all these conditions, these are the other uh, facts that they are. How, how many uh, uh, hours or how, what is the exposure time that how do we determine? So when you really determine how uh, exposure time looking at the percentage of exposure, clouds and the UV light and everything, usually they say that it is time range from 14 to 133 minutes. So you know people don't stay like that. So the, if in the proper conditions at least in the 30% of exposure, 15 minutes is enough. But not for everybody. 
because all are not in that optimum condition. So this is what which has happened now. Vitamin D deficiency has come up in Sri Lanka because most of them people do not believe. People say all this data are wrong. Uh, the, the, there's no problem of vitamin D. But but this is the fact because this is what the things have been changed in the with the over the years. So we had to really face the facts and the, we had to really do some uh, interventions for the, this problem. So uh, um, you know in everything about vitamin D and the COVID, I think most of you read, but I thought I would just highlight the latest research. Um, uh, they uh, have done this retrospective cohort study uh, in the Urban Academic Medical Center, which was conducted in uh, March after this COVID. Uh, they were uh, COVID uh, tested and the um, deficient vitamin D, uh, they um, showed that vitamin D status is kind of associated with the increased COVID-19 risk. And then the, um, uh, the, the, in there that they have recommended, they are the general broad population in groups and they having the something like uh, vitamin D deficiency really give some uh, inputs to that and the, it will reduce the incidence of COVID-19. So these are the kind of research which are available with the COVID-19 and the vitamin D. So in addition to that, we had to now, I am really talking about the positive aspect. At the same time, now we had to think about our immune system. What are the negative eating patterns? This is also very important because sometimes people are eating all these things. But at the same time, we think they are, they are very good, very healthy, but still that what has happened to their immune system? That's because they have a negative eating patterns also, which will affect the immune system. So negative eating pattern is the high sugar, high fat, which will really enhance the inflammation. So that's another thing we have to think about. People can eat sugar, people can eat fat, but it should be in the normal range. And we always say sugar, limit to the six teaspoons, fat, limit to the two tablespoons of oil. So then the that, that means you are maintaining your balance, but if you are going high sugar, high fat, in the, um, it which will really enhance the inflammation. Then I thought I will really highlight few fruit item, food items which can be, be feasible for the people to uh, maintain the, what I have mentioned, the, whatever the vitamins and the things, uh, taking from the one or two fruit items. So because in the practical aspect, very difficult for the people to otherwise. Um, um, uh, this uh, ad, uh, get into the, this practice. So one is banana. So the whatever things banana has, banana is in plenty in Sri Lanka and no season for that. You can buy it ev every day and the eat one a day will really give you, as I mentioned you all the things previously, B6, C, all these copper and everything will come from that. So that will actually help people to maintain. But it does not mean you can eat a bunch of banana because when you eat a bunch of banana, what happens is it has a lot of carbohydrate. Then the, we are eating too much of rice and over that when we are eating too much of banana, our carbohydrate content will go up and the, it will be a problem with our insu uh, uh, insulin resistance. So this is also we have to think about. So that's what we say, eat one banana so that will really maintain them, but it does not mean banana is ripening at home and eating everything by one person. So that's not the uh, kind of acceptable thing. Then the other one is a Murunga, drumstick leaf, so which has a lot of, uh, which has 15 vitamins and minerals and the which will really other thing help people to, they can have it as a colacanda or vegetable juice or whatever soup or anything, I mean there are so many ways of preparing and they can uh, take it. But there is a big issue with the drumstick leaf because it has sulfur. So if someone is sulfur allergic, they get the problem. So that's the only problem with the drumstick because of the it contains the side. Then the, when we really look at the COVID situation, I mean I am just looking at what we look in the uh, things. Now what has happened during the lockdown period, people have a big issue with the limited choices. They have a sedentary lifestyle. But at the same time, there are some positives because there's no way of eating out. They increase cooking at home. Because this is another good thing with this one, as well as people shifted to the home gardening and therefore they had the less infection for bone diseases. So these are the positives they got with the lockdown. But at the same time, um, now we have to uh, adapt to live with the COVID till vaccine is released. Most of another two weeks time or something, we have to um, live with it. And the other thing is uh, because of the 
affordability people the affordability has gone uh, down because of unemployment loss of jobs and the so many issues that they have um, the, then we had to really think about all these aspects actually in the covid situation because it is not a very simple one when you put it into the society it is very complex so it's a complex in nature so in the as well as in the nutrition so so far no evidence that nutrition will prevent covid but it will uh, really optimum nutrition will really uh, enhance proper nutrition immunity function and it will really reduce the inflammatory status so this is what very important so the finally that what nutrition will do is it will really strengthen your immune system and the reduce the inflammatory status so the with that i mean these are the kind of recommendations for the kind of uh, given globally and the specially eating variety of food um, and the special and the eating fruits and vegetable as i mentioned you this, this time no fruits and the vegetables are also expensive so we had to think about what are the kind of optional vegetables at the same time this um, going for the healthy fat that mean uh, rich with the omega 3 one and the watching your intake of the fat sugar and salt and the continue the practice of good diet hygiene and the especially drinking water this is very much important at least to have 1.5 liters to 2 liters that means 6 to 8 glasses of water throughout the day is very important and the consumption of alcohol i think limiting it or no alcohol and the exercising regularly is uh, very important and the most of the important I mean, the, one of the very important thing is adequate sleep i think as adults we have to have the 6 hour minimum 6 hour sleep and the children they need 8 hours sleep so that's another thing very important to maintain your uh, immune system with that thank you very much any questions Madam, if Salia is deep fried, is there any issue with the chemistry of the omega-3 example for someone is asking Salia? So the Salia actually, um, uh, sometimes what happens is when you are deep fried, um, the, you have to minimize the uh, frying uh, time. If you minimize the frying time, otherwise what happens is the, um, the fatty acid in the uh, fish, it will come into the brain, into the oil. So the um, uh, the we have to really do it very quickly. So that's what now the are priors are there. Uh, or we have um, uh, kind of, uh, you can, uh, we have to go, the, go into the practices like this in grilling and the baking and the things. These are very important. Because in Sri Lanka, the baking and grilling are kind of not a kind of cooking practices people are using. But we have to think of now going for these type of things if we really want to eat very healthy. <coughs> You uh, in the past, uh, they had a balance of the omega-6 and omega-3 in the diet. And then uh, you said it's uh, omega-6 and omega-3. So how do we know that we get a balance? Like, how much of each do we need? Quantity-wise, we say then 100 grams of each, at least minimum. Minimum quantity is uh, 100 grams. If you get the minimum 100 grams, you can really get the, to a certain level of your omega-3 fatties. But the currently the issue is uh, children, the kids, they don't like fish. They don't eat much fish. But the, some people they eat and the most of the fish they like is like kind of kalapat. And then kalapat does not have much omega-3 fatties. But tuna has, saleh has, limna has, all these things has. So the varied uh, kind of uh, fish. But the minimum quantity is 100 grams a day. So someone asking, Salia, dried fish, okay. Uh, so, I mean, the dried fish is good in Sri Lanka because it is uh, kind of, it's uh, dried on uh, over the sun. But the main issue is uh, the dried fish, you have to put only 12% of salt for the processing, um, process, uh, processing for the, to process it. But currently our dried fish, they add a lot of uh, salt. I think maybe due to the kind of humidity, they, they have to maintain the um, uh, it out from the humidity they add a lot of salt <laughs> because of that most of the salt uh, most of the dried fish in the market it has about 20 to 30 percent of salt so the um, 
but there are good things to do in now traditionally also people have done to how to remove the salt before cooking so in about in our laboratory we tested these kind of four methods one is just uh, washing with water uh, other one is we did with the um, uh, washing keeping keeping the hot water for um, five minutes other one we boil um, uh, for five minutes um, uh, but the fourth one we did is put it into the coconut water so all these four methods we found, <coughs> they are the, about 80% um, uh, of loss of um, salt with this coconut oil, keeping in the coconut water and the, um, the, with the boiling. But at the same time, what happened is with the boiling, the, there is a loss of protein with the while boiling because it just get lost because we are removing that uh, one. But in the when as we are cooking when we boil, it will drain into our curry our gravy but it happened it does not happen so with that we were thinking that actually the coconut uh, um, keeping in the coconut water is a good method to remove this excess salt so there are a kind of things we have to really practice because uh, sometimes people can't practically eat 100 grams of uh, fish because it is not available for people most of the time it is going when it is going for the villagers and things uh, they are the Spoilage has started and then they get a lot of allergies. This is what the people get allergies. <laughs> so now, um, uh, so that the alternative is the right dish. Only 60% of the people in this country has uh, refrigerators. Other 40% they don't have refrigerators. If you don't have refrigerators, if you can't buy the fish every day, then the, you have to go for the other option. So that's the other option is the dried fish. So that's what a lot of people in the villages they use. Then the, how do you, then the use it is the removing the salt is the, these are the other methods you can really use. So how long do you recommend that you keep it in coconut water? Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, five minutes is more than enough. Actually, the chicken, the chicken is a kind of good kind of protein because um, it has less fat compared to the other meat. Um, uh, consuming chicken is not a big issue, um, uh, the uh, but it should not be uh, every day for the all three meats because you need a kind of mixture. Because then the, I think children should really learn uh, to eat chicken with fish and the dried fish and the pulses and everything mixed of it. Not 100% eating chicken. Because when they eat the 100% of chicken, what happens is um, uh, they will get the protein, but at the same time, they will get the other adverse things also. The adverse things in the sense, I mean, this chicken sometimes we eat with the different kind of um, feed. But in the kind of good uh, chicken factories, they give the very good kind of feed. But uh, some places, they give all the things that which are discarded one and things. So we know that heavy metals are very high in the, those kind of things. So then the exposure to heavy metals will be more when you are eating continuously. So it's good to have a mix of it. Uh, that, that may be correct because when we uh, tested women, um, uh, we did the whole, I learned the uh, women um, analysis of the women, we have not finished yet the um, uh, paper, 95% uh, of them were deficient. So that may be the infiltration you see in the hospital. But as um, um, uh, it depends on the level of vitamin D. So if the level is between 10 to 20, uh, that's also deficient. But that deficient level, you can always give about the... Uh, uh, weekly dose for them. Weekly dose is something like 50 to 60,000 international unit weekly for 6 to 8 weeks. It depends on the level of the thing, 6 weeks or 8 weeks. So that means 6 tablets or 8 tablets. But if it is less than um, um, 10, that means less than 10 mean it is a severe deficiency. If it is severe deficiency, it's better, better to give the 300,000 kind of stat dose and then you have to maintain from the 2,000 international unit from the hour, but for at least for three months, 300,000.
uh, you can give orally. That you don't need to give with IM and the oral tablets are also there. Otherwise, can give with, I mean, if it is ICU patient or someone, can give IM. Otherwise, if it is an OPD patient, can give oral. But then the, you have to continue the 2000 international unit every day for the three months. Then only the levels will come back to the normal. Otherwise, level will never come back to the normal. Better to maintain at the 40 to 60 level. Because most of the, our patients are less than 20 and the, some are less than 10 and the majority between 20 to 30. So 20 to 30 people, then the, you need about um, 2000 international unit at every day for three months. So sometimes we uh, look at the cost because cost is very high for the people to take 2000 every day. Then what we do is we sometimes give the that type of even 20 to 30, we give the metadose like 50,000 50, weekly for four weeks and the finish. That means four tablets. So then the cost is similar less as well as the, it's a practical as, I mean, for the people it is easy to use. Uh, usually after three months you have to recheck but the thing is cost and everything. We don't really check it and then once you use something, if you check it, I think that's, you know, because the patients itself uh, say that they have got the improvement with their fatigue, muscle cramps and the night muscle cramps and everything will get improved with the, um, when it gets resolved, resolved. Most of the time, this fatigue and the night muscle cramps, these are the very common complaints. And the obesity people eternally we give because obesity because of the fat cells they need more vitamin D than the normal person because the normal person's level is thousand international unit but the obesity need the about two thousand international unit so they really need the uh, higher dose than the um, normal person. Now we have to tell them then the between 12 to 1, they have to be in the sun for 15 minutes. Then they can replenish their stores and they can sustain. So that as a treatment, we have to tell them between 12 to 1, that is the peak of uh, 1. And we know if they stay in the 15 minutes, they don't get any problem with the skin um, um, uh, burning. So the 15 minutes, they have to somehow stay 15 minutes in the sun. Then they can really sustain without any problem because the thing is if the problem is going on you have to go for a kind of a fortification program in the future like ID because uh, otherwise uh, supplementation is not a kind of long-term solution. Supplementation we can do in the hospital setting but it is not a long-term solution then you have to go for a kind of uh, taking the common food items and the like milk or something and the, then adding the vitamin D and doing the fortification. That's what other countries have done. All the, green, the greens and the um, um, kind of uh, yellow kind of vegetables and the yellow fruits and the, those are the things you have to add uh, the day-to-day -day, um, food the, because which has a lot of antioxidant, anything. Uh, the, and the, because I think when we really go back to our collagen and things, so these are positive things of collagen because whatever the negative thing of collagen was, uh, people preparing it in the wrong manner because what they prepare is only rice and the milk, the coconut milk. It's not the very little um, uh, kind of vegetables, may put the green leaves. So I think you have to make it that the kind of juice, vegetable juice level or the little, uh, this put in this rice uh, one teaspoon and the put in little bit of uh, coconut in to get only the flavor. So that's the way we have to change the way of uh, preparing it. Then the, you can really get your selenium, your whole more whole gamut of the things you can get from our green leaves in the country. Because we have tested almost all our green leaves in the country like Mukunu and Gotukola and everything. So it has plenty of uh, this uh, selenium and everything is there in uh, plenty in uh, our green leaves. Okay, then thank you very much. We'll thank uh, Dr. Renuka Jais for excellent talk. Um, so we'll meet up with the next uh, CMA lecture. Thanks.